everyone and welcome to our study tonight. Our topic is books and their meaning. Sunday, understanding the scriptures, words and their meanings, repetition, word patterns and meanings, and the last night, text and context. Now we come to the larger unit, the book and their meaning. Our Father in Heaven, tonight we pause for a while to invite your spirit now to guide us, to give us understanding. And as an introductory study, we pray that you will help us see the importance of studying books of the Bible. May it speak to us tonight, for I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Books and their messages. This is our topic tonight as an introductory concept. I have introduced this concept yesterday or last night, the concept of a larger unit. Allow me to repeat it and then we will go direct to our topic tonight. We said that in interpreting properly the scripture, a student must understand the meaning of a word in a smaller unit or in a sentence. The student must also understand the meaning of the word or a word in a paragraph, how it is used, and also how a word is used or understood in the chapter. And tonight, we will study how the writers communicated the message through the book, the whole book. And that is what we mean by the larger unit, the books. So, we will now consider a background of the study of the books of the Bible. According to our study guide, to understand the message of each book, we need to understand or study first the authors and then the purpose of the book and the settings. I have enumerated here some examples of the books and then the authors, the purpose, and uh, the settings. For example, the first book of the Bible is called Genesis. We we know the author is Moses and the purpose of this is to write the origin of uh, the history of planet earth, the history of mankind, the history of salvation, sin, and other consequences that follows. We are informed that this book was written by Moses while he was wandering in the wilderness of Midian. Kings, first and second Kings, the author is not known. There are some suggestions that it was written by Ezra, by Ezekiel, but it was not known, so we just put there not known. The purpose of that is to record the history of the kings, Saul, David, and Solomon, and all the children, grandchildren of David actually ruled in Jerusalem. That was the example. That's the example. Then we have also Psalms as another book written by David. It's just a compilation of Psalms. Uh, Songs. songs were sung generally in Jerusalem, most particularly in the temple in Jerusalem. Another book in the Bible is the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, which is actually a letter also. But this is highly prophetic uh, book written by Apostle John, the youngest of the twelve disciples. Okay? The purpose is prophecy, apocalyptic prophecy. Of course, the setting is Asia Minor. The book of Romans is one of the epistles or pastoral letters of Paul. And this was written in Corinth, uh, the church in Roman. And another example there is the book of Matthew. The author is Matthew himself. The purpose is to write the, the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. According to scholars, some authorities, it was written somewhere in Syria, where a large of Jews were scattered at the time it was. So these are just examples of the items we need to understand, study first before we go into the book itself. By the way, our study tonight is introductory to our study next week and the week after next. So we will be studying one book, the book of Genesis, next week and uh, the week after. 14 days of study on the book of Genesis. Part of our introductory study is the first book of Genesis. Why is this important? This is important because this records the origin of humanity and the origin of uh, God's history in his dealing with his people which actually started in the creation week okay? so in Genesis 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning God and we know what follows next everything that we see around was created by God in the climax the crowning act of his creation was actually the creation 
salvation of man, not by his word, but by his hands. We were carefully designed by the Lord. And also the book of Genesis, aside from its origin or records of our history in the dealings of God or salvation, uh, yes, it is also the record of God's saving act. Particularly, the, the redemption act was actually recorded in Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. It's understood that immediately when Adam and Eve sinned, God provided the sacrificial lamb. The death was diverted instead to Adam and Eve. The victim of sin was the animal. And that was the sacrificial act of God. That animal pointed to the coming Redeemer and that's none other than Jesus Christ. The act of the garments of skin was the promise of redemption. And we will explore that all throughout the coming weeks. The plan of salvation started in the book of Jesus. Genesis and all throughout Revelation, that concept of redemption will be the focus of the Bible in our study. The act of God of clothing them symbolizes the act of God that He did in a way that man can live in His presence. What He did there in Genesis 3.21 was an act that human beings, Adam and Eve, cannot do for themselves, and that is to live in their presence. So God has initiated something so that human beings who have fallen into sin can still live in His presence. And that's the big concept all throughout the scriptures. And we are waiting for that, the final realization of the plan of God to restore us in His own presence. In a holy presence of God, we will not die. And we are looking for that time when our final redemption will be completed. So that is found in the book of Genesis. The plan of redemption was more complete when God entered into a covenant with Abraham. Okay? And the Lord has promised Abraham in Genesis 22:17, I will surely bless you and all your descendants will be blessed by the Lord, including ourselves. You know, we descended from our great grandfather Abraham, the father of faith. And uh, tonight, I'd like to invite you to reflect some more based on this. Genesis 22:17 from English Standard Version, it says, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. I'd like to underscore that one of the offsprings of Abraham is actually none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus has possessed the gate of our enemies. Satan, sin, and death. Jesus has possessed this one at the cross and he is coming back to give us eternal life. If we believe in him, we as offsprings in faith can also possess sin, Satan, and death. And that will be a reality when Jesus Christ comes. So tonight in our reflection, I coined this from Genesis 22:17 in a form of a prayer. As offspring of Abraham, Jesus who have conquered our enemies, Satan, sin, and death. Bless me, Lord, materially as well as spiritually. You see, in our time, we are still fighting against our enemies. And that's none other than the virus that is deadly, that is killing thousands of people. When we ask the Lord to bless us, not just spiritually, but materially, that includes protection from contamination. Spiritually, in a sense, that when Jesus Christ comes, we will be able to go with Him because the Lord has removed our sin, has forgiven us. I hope you will agree with this prayer and that your response will be strongly agree. We ask the Lord to bless us as He promised Abraham and all his descendants will be blessed the Lord. This same promise is available for us today. We can still claim this one. Father in heaven, thank you that we have descended from Father Abraham whom you have promised you will bless. So we ask you Lord that you keep us from this virus that is killing thousands of people. Thank you that you stop this by your power. Thank you that you will restore us in your presence when you come. Because I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Lift up.
the trumpet and 